saw went in place and said, said unisex. And I thought, unisex? What the heck does that mean? Am I going to go in and find a woman or a urinal? What am I going to find? Because they have to make a place where either one can go. As if there's a third gender. <laughs> we were made a social being. Now, when God created Adam, he saw that Adam needed something that none of the animals fulfilled. And God said, what Adam needs is a woman. Because not only are we a spiritual being, we are a social being. Well, I'm bored stiff. I gotta go see my I gotta go see my friends. We're bored stiff because we are built to need fellowship and we're built to be social. And we need relationships with people. We need we need living things. He, so he's a social being. He is a spiritual being. A male needs a female. Terry has always said I needed a female. Terry says, I don't know how you made in life without me. And I'm saying, you're right. And it is not good for a man to be alone because he is created as a sexual being. Now, I don't care how young you are, how old you are, you never get out of that. You never get out. And I have to watch my eyes when I see a beautiful woman. I told Cherry the other day, I was watching something, I said, honey, I'm just looking at her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> now, before I go any further, let me just acknowledge for a moment that many of us here this morning, for one reason or another, that God has called, created us to some sense, and some may be, some, you know, we all have different ideas. Some single, some are married, some are divorced, and blah, blah, blah. And some may be because you simply prefer it that way. Many others because we have never met the person we would like to spend our lives with. And can I share with you, it is better to spend time, it's better to be like my son who waited till he was almost 40 to get married, instead of just marrying someone, it's better to wait that God gives you the right person than to get in a hurry. If you are only 18, if you're only 12 or 13, relax, <laughs> relax. Your time's going to come and you'll say, why did I do it so early? If you're 40, you will have thought many times, is this the way it's going to be for the rest of my life? And some of us, because somebody has walked out on you or because your spouse has died or somewhere like that, you know, is it ever going to happen? Charity's Aunt Charity. Aunt Charity. How old was she when she got married? 65. Charity's aunt was 65 years old and she got married for the first time. And boy was she happy. <laughs> she lived a, she lived the next year she lived and her ten husband. Ten years. Ten years, years she had a beautiful and she says it was worth waiting this long to be married to this man. So sometimes God is telling us to do certain things at certain times. And that's good. Some of us may be single because we are not particularly attracted to the opposite sex and we simply live with the fact that we won't get excited about that either. I have people that will watch me on tape. But I'm going to spend one morning talking about that in 1 Peter at 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And I'm going to talk one day on the theme of being uh, having this idea. But I want us to talk about, it, and so it was, verse 18 of chapter 2, I believe, and so it was not good for man to be alone. And here is the solution in verse 18. The Lord God said, It is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. 
So God is going to make a helper suitable for Adam. Next verse. And it says that all of the animals were brought before Adam, and he named them. Now, it looks as though it doesn't mean this. It looks as though it means God said, I find, I'll find somebody suitable for you. Well, if I just have my horse, well, if I just have my dog, I'll be happy. I don't need a woman around. As long as I've got my lion or my chimpanzee, I'll be happy. But God didn't make animals to be suitable for humanity. We've been going over the animals. But the elephant was too big, you know. And the monkey never sat still long enough, and the giraffe gave him a stiff neck, and the cows was moody, and the dog was the best. And the cat was a bit more boring, but at least it sat around and slept and you at least felt, felt you had company, though you really didn't. And the rabbits were boring, and goldfish were especially boring. So after a while, you say, there's got to be somebody else, Adam said. And so at the end of that, it looked as though God says, well, that's not enough. He had all the animals. God said, it doesn't look like you're very happy with all the animals. And thirdly, he is being a sexual being. A male, he needs a female. And it's not good for a man to be alone because he is created as a sexual being. I just want you to understand that. Now, before I go any further, let me acknowledge for a moment that many of us here at this, we, we need to understand that. Some of us, I mean, that means, so, so, gender, and thirdly, as a sexual being. That means, Find where I'm at. I don't say the same thing twice. Let me mention we have spiritual and social and sexual need. Every person born. And it starts when you are it starts when you are born. Whoa, that is permanent. That's permanent. When you were born, starting with, what's her name, that little baby? Presley. Presley. How old is she? She's two. Two. That little baby. Just two. She's two years old. Okay. And how old How old are you? Two nine. You're nine. And how old is little, what's his name? He's five. All right. When these, all right, when they were born, God put in them a spiritual need. He put in them a social need, and He put in them a sexual need. Now, they may not understand that but every person born has a spiritual need, a social need, and a sexual need. Now, they may not know what it is that needs to be fulfilled. They have a social need, but they may not know how to fulfill that. But you can tell with Presley, she has a social need. She has to be around people. And she has to be around certain people. And she has to have certain people she likes. It's innate in her. And they have all of these needs that have to be fulfilled. It, in actuality, and it's actually lovely to relate 
some people say in this deal, that to relate to an animal socially, a dog can be a very good friend. A cat can be okay. Our kids have animals. People that are the 4-H have pigs and rabbits and and in fact people this week have won prizes for taking care of their animals. But they were great friends to our children and you, you learn a lot from the life of an animal. You learn to deal with mourning and grief and sadness when, when they die. You learn the facts of life. You can have a male and female. Stick them in the same cage. You work out what happens and why. Spiritual beings, social beings. Now you ask, what makes the difference between an animal and a person. But the animal has you you can have you can have you can have a social you can but the thing that animals don't have is a spiritual understanding. So what makes the distinction? Why did he make Eve from the dust of the earth in the way that he made Adam? That would demonstrate their equality, but instead he made her from his ribs. And I suggest to you there is a very important reason that God did not create Eve from the dust of the ground like he did it, like he did Adam. And that was he made them equal. He made them equal. And I suggest they were created from one flesh into two separate individuals, separate genders. In fact, Adam is so surprised by this that when he woke up, having been in deep sleep, and there was Eve, God put him to sleep, took the rib out, created in that rib a woman. And when, he, when Adam woke up, he said, whoa, man, wow, fantastic, God, man. He just went on and on and on. But he never saw a woman before. But he saw all the animals.